learning from uh, students with uh, economic background, but uh, I still uh, take some time for spend some time in all this section to make sure that all of you understand well about our subjects, because um, from the theory to the practice, um, you think it uh, has a gap, but uh, it's the gap will be sorted if you can't understand uh, more thoroughly about the theories. And the second section is about the decisions with firm. For this part, you will learn about the demand, uh, demand side and the, uh, you see that decisions with the firms, most of you will think about the, uh, the goals of earning money and for the firm it's all called as profit. So profit uh, simply can calculate, can compute it from taking total revenue and minus total cost and revenues come from the customer. That's why we will learn about the demand and we will learn about the cost of production of the firm. And then to combine these two to understand from what, from what source uh, the, the enterprise can earn their money, can make their profit. So for this part, we will learn about the demand elasticity, demand estimations and forecasting and the theory of production and cost. And for section four, about the competing within the markets, you will learn about the market structure and you, you, uh, which help you understand about the different type of enterprise uh, performing in the market. So based on their competitiveness, the levels of competitiveness, the, uh, based on the differentiations or the similarity of the products, based on the, the levels of access to um, information, market information, and we will have some uh, criteria to differentiate um, enterprises and different markets. And this most about the uh, market structure. And for this market structure, you will learn about the perfect competition, monopoly, oligopoly, and uh, many kinds of methods or uh, tools for enterprise <coughs> compete with each other in markets. It's a game theory and some competitive strategy. So that's the three parts. So in general, it's all the application of microeconomics and to some extent macroeconomics in many uh, managerial. So that's why this three part is the organizer, as you can see. So for today, so today I would like to tell you about the uh, introduction part and I want to complete uh, section one today or if we can, so we try to finish, finish in, in the morning. And also, I, I have something that I want to discuss with you about the schedule. As yes, I want to uh, at last, uh, start at 8 o'clock, and for in the afternoons, it will start from um, 1.30. That's for today. I have some, uh, yes, I, I have a, a little bit busy in the afternoon. So, can we start at 2.30? Is that too late? In case uh, it's too late and you have uh, another time to, to take this class, we, will, we, will may, we may move uh, this uh, message to uh, another day. If you have time, or if not, so please to wait for me until two p. two thirty. So, what is the choice? Two thirty. 
2.30 is okay, yes. So we will go with the schedule. And this afternoon we will, be, we will start from 2.30. Yes. Just today. And from tomorrow. And the lessons uh, later we will start in the morning from 8 a.m. And in the, uh, in the afternoons we will start from 1 p.m. Uh, 1.30. Okay. Now, introduction to many real economics. First, can you, uh, some of you, can you answer my questions? What do you think about economics? What type of subject do you think of? What is this, the definition? Or why you have to learn economics? I, I think we can learn about the uh, series of uh, behaviors of uh, buyers and sellers. Okay. And the whole economics um, of the country. Yes, perfect. So, you see, I, I specialize the worst of the terms behavior that he referred to and the behavior of the buyer and the seller in micro and maybe the behaviors of the economy. But you see that if you want to understand the economy, you have to understand the components of the economy's behavior. So when you make any explanations about how the strategies of the macro, how the macro strategy uh, that's the, the government's will carry on. You have to understand how it will have impact on the, the components of the economy, like the firms, like the consumers, like industries, and like uh, maybe foreign uh, sector, will, how they will uh, react to the implement implementation. So the behavior and the behaviors of all the agents of the economy. And the, the agents can be the firms, can be the consumers, and can be the government, and can be the international, the foreign sector. Sometimes if we relate to the uh, open economy, you can see that the economy can be classified in different uh, levels or degrees of complication from the simple economy with only two sectors of firms and has a whole of firms and consumer. And the second is the, the economy with the two uh, sectors and with the participation of the government. And the last one, the most complicated is an open economy with the participation of the public sectors, of um, in, uh, um, public, uh, private sectors, public sector and the, the, the foreign sector. So, but for all that type of organizations of the economy, we always consider the behaviors of the participants. So the behavior is one of the uh, is one of the um, keyword. But however, another question. You see, that's why we have to consider their behavior. How? Why we have to uh, think about their decision of the firms of individuals of the of the government? Why? Why do you have to make decisions in your life? Why do you choose this program instead of instead of other programs? Why do you choose to join learn uh, um, administration administrative degree instead of mechanic mechanics or engineering? 
Why? Why do we choose? I think um, um, the uh, BA is a um, is a suitable for me. Oh, suitable for you? Yes. How? How is suitable for you? I think it's it will taste a little bit easier than uh, I mean anything else. Oh, uh, not not only easier, but maybe suitable with your abilities. Yes, you have ability to communicate, 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 communicate well with others. You have the, uh, you have uh, abilities to make uh, economic decisions, and you find hard in working with uh, cal calculations or uh, physics or um, mechanics. Okay, or thermals, the uh, uh, subjects like that. So it's the kind of and another expressions of limited resources. So your resources are suitable with an BA uh, and as degree program instead of in engineering or in the software uh, engineering, yes. And for others they may only start their ability uh, suitable for other subjects. Similarly, uh, a firm they have to choose to produce a goods or provide services. Yes, someone like Chen Tai. Yeah. He he's a talent in his field, and you can introduce some films with a uh, very high revenue, like my tomorrow, yeah. Uh, the title of the film, for the film, the movie is tomorrow, but the money he gets is uh, now. <laughs> it's at present, not tomorrow, today, <laughs> not tomorrow. Now, you see that? Someone may have ability in some fields, and the firm have to choose. If you have a, a young age that lasts not only 10 years, but 50 years, you may have another choice. You can try with this subject and other subjects, and then you choose which is the best for you. But you don't have enough time to do that and do, have, do not have enough capability to do that. That's why you have to make decisions. And for a firm, they want to diversify their products, produce, try to produce some movies, and try to produce some things um, tangible, like um, for um, computers or books, but they have limited sources. What can be listed as the sources? What include in sources? I think human resources. Yes, human resources and, and uh, budget. Mm -hmm. Budget. Budget is all capital. Mm -hmm. And experiences. Experiences, okay. And the uh, markets as a whole. Oh, market. So maybe the uh, the limited scale of the market. Yes, but the market is something outside the control controls of the, the enterprise. So we refer to resources. Maybe so we have external resources and internal resources. But the internal resources may have more uh, important roles for us, the enterprise to choose their fields of operation. So our uh, capital, so labor, so uh, human resources are uh, human. Is a, I think it's a good point uh, because when we refer to uh, um, to a workers or an employee, we think about labor. That's for economics we will classify one's working for a, um, an enterprise into two types. One belong to labor if they, ha they have a limited educational level. But for those, 
who uh, who have a higher ability and a higher levels of education, so we we'll classify as a kind of capital. That's the human capital or human resource. And maybe for your field, another very important resource. Machinery. Machinery, yes, a type of technology. So technology is a, an important resource for enterprise, for a, a country, and even for individual. Because technology is not only referred to the, to the machine, not only refer to the production line, it's about the way we combine our inputs to create output. So when we change the way we combine all the inputs to get bigger output, it can be called that we are making the change to the technology. That's why Management is a kind of technology because based on the management, you can improve the the competitiveness, the um, effectiveness, the proficiency and capability of a business. As for individuals, also, you see that's the way you combine all your input to get a better. Output that can be a kind of technology. So not only machine, not only production line or production process, but management is also. And by the way, have you heard about the difference between the outcome and the output? Do you have a think of the difference between the, the outcomes and the output? Uh, think about these programs. What will be the outcome and what will be the output? I think when we, uh, when we have a limit of the results, mm -hmm. we want to make the bigger of the outputs. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have the system. Mm -hmm. We uh, make the better system. And we know the uh, how the result we we expect to to get, and we find a way to 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 get against the the expected. Oh, ah, so so you think that's a one of the outcome of this course yeah. or this program is after uh, upon the completions of this goal, you will understand about the the scale resources, the care scale resources. That's um, that's the terms for the limited limitations of the resource, and then to find a way to how to make the best use of the limited uh, input of yeah. resource and improve the uh, improve uh, the system. Yes, yeah. and improve your system, yeah. both in uh, in the technical aspect and the many many uh, man uh, managerial aspect. Okay, thank you. That's the kind of the outputs of this course. Thus, you can get the knowledge, you can get the degree, and you can improve yourself. But maybe the when we refer to very good question answer. Thank you. So, for outcome, it's maybe larger and sometimes maybe more abstract. Uh, because um, outputs you can quite try to list and care or quantify it. As for output, it's something um, intangible. Like after graduate, uh, from graduating from this program, you can uh, have a better <coughs> with other friends as classmates. And that's the kind of outcome. So outcomes can be larger than output. And sometimes you enter a class or you participate, take part in this activity, you expect about more about the outcome rather than output. 
First of all, this suggests we will try to quantify everything with uh, as the, the outcome uh, of the outcome. So we mainly focus on the output. This outcome may be its uh, larger, uh, large, have a larger meaning as uh, that's all everyone expect about the programs of various any activities uh, of their firms or this, uh, themselves. Okay? So this is a, a economics in general. This is a study of behavior of human beings in producing, distributing, and consuming material goods and services in the world of scarce resources. So, keyword here is behavior, and another keyword is a scarce resources. And scarce resources is the the, the 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 cost of economics. Imagine that you can have uh, enough the ability, enough resources for do everything, <coughs> for doing anything. You don't need to have to learn economics because you don't need to have made your choice <coughs> in the in the um, conditions of limited inputs. So from the scale resources or more specifically is the contradictions between the scale resources and the increasing demand. <coughs> you always have a higher and higher demand, but you have limited sources. So you have to try to deal with the, the question, how to maximize our output? How to meet their want and their de desire? in the best way, with the limited sources. So that's why economics is a science of choice. Because you have to, you will have the, the instruments to make your decision. It will not help you to make all the best decisions, all, all the right decision, but it will help you to make decisions in a small scientific and it's a more practical way. So this skills, this good word is uh, scale resources. And the another part of this definition is uh, management. So management is the the science of organizing and allocating the firm's scale resources to achieve its desired objectives. So for the scale resources, you have to try to farm it in the best way and to achieve its desired objective. Management in nature is a method to get the objective to or to achieve the goal. So when whenever you refer to management, the first question you have to raise is what is the goal? What is the goal of the firm? What is the goals of the employees? What is the goals of the um, of each uh, of individuals? Or if, what is the goals of the country? So from the goals, they use management is the method to achieve the goal. And from that, management is the kind of use the input to get the desired objective. And that's why, for the next part, when we learn about the firm, we learn about the goals of the firm. For example, revenue or profit. And from that, we will trace back to the way to get or to maximize their profit or their revenue. So that's um, the, how we understand about the management. Uh, combine economics with management. We have the definitions of managerial economics. That's the use of the economics theory, or the use of economics analysis to make uh, business decisions. 
involving the less use or the less allocations of optimization scale process. And it's include economics theories and this is in making science. Uh, for later parts, when we learned about wave theory, you will see that they have different choices and when they have to make any decisions, they will see the, the, uh, the, the up, outcome or the output of each decision before coming to the final decision. Not consider about the firms them, themselves, but about the other competitors in the market. Uh, from the definitions of managerial economics, you will see uh, this field may have some relations to other business disciplines. Can you can you talk about the relations of uh, managerial economics with other fields? can have relations to uh, managerial economics and how? Can you give example? Uh, by the way, from the assessments of uh, your learning, we will have two parts. One is a final exam and one is a um, uh, I think it's an uh, ongoing assessment for, for the final, final score. You into, in, uh, include two parts. And for the um, also most, the thing is uh, in more simplified way, you will have midterm test and final test. So for the midterm, I would like you to make presentation. In group, yes, you will classify in groups, and I see in your list you have uh, seven, 14 students in total. Is that true? I think we have about 11. 11. 11 instead of uh, 14. I think so. Uh, not 14. Okay, so 11. For 11 students, you will have a three groups. Three groups, and so I will give you the topic for your midterm uh, presentation, and uh, you will make presentations to get the score for the uh, for the midterm test. Um, but do you know that the ways of assessments may be quite flexible, so I will help you uh, give you the chance to discuss with each other to to choose the methods of assessment and I will consider your preference. For the midterms, you can, we can use the, um, the assessment uh, yeah, about the, the, the assessment. <laughs> so maybe we have the, the first discussion a uh, group presentation and you have the individual test mm? test yes the test I I can uh, yes I can ask you to do the test in class in class test or you can make it at home it's okay yes many of you will choose at home and if I raise the question like you want to submit the, uh, your assignment uh, within two weeks or four weeks? Most of you will choose four weeks. Four weeks. But in fact, you only need, I think, um, three only three people, three days to complete your assignment. But you still choose four weeks. You will to extend your worry. All, all of us have that tendency. Yes, and they make, uh, they, some scientists, they do uh, exercise, they, they, do, they carry, uh, they carry out their, their research, 
and they find that people seem to have seem to want to uh, expand their their pain, yeah, their worry, because they always want to extend the deadline. But the shorter the deadline, the easier your life is. Okay. Uh, it's not the perfect result, not depends on two weeks or four weeks, but we always choose four weeks. But you, we don't need two weeks to, to get the perfect result. But we we'll still want to longer deadline. Okay, yes, that's a psychological phenomenon of most people. Okay, if you want to, you have to. If you want four, you have to, uh, you have four. Yes, it's easy for me to extend your worry. <laughs> okay. <coughs> you will have an individual assignment and you will have uh, the uh, proof, the presentation. And two of uh, two two components or two type of uh, doing uh, SNS won't be calculated in your final score. And for midterms, sometimes I will give you some <coughs> insights uh, besides the multiple choice questions. <coughs> and uh, sometimes you won't have some games, like very simple games like quizzes or cab. And the ones uh, who has the, get the um, who is the winner or the first runner will get a star and the star will make sure that you get a high and get better uh, score in uh, meter in uh, for meter score okay so we have a diversified ways of uh, assessment and your contributions with the the um, each lesson is also considered as a part of uh, ongoing assessment so uh, don't be hesitant to raise your uh, to raise your ideas. Uh, all of you working uh, have a um, uh, enters the, the labor market and work in uh, in the firms or at the institution. So try to discuss uh, in a an uh, open way. Feel free to raise your question. Don't, to, uh, don't be too stressful in our class. Don't worry about the, the final score. Yes. For, uh, from my experience, most of you get quite, uh, I think it's most of you quite satisfied with your final score. So don't worry. Okay, now back to my question. How do you think later juniors economics can help the, uh, the uh, connection with other fields? First, you list the fields may have connection with manager of your economics, and then how how they can uh, support with each other. And if you can give an example to prove your arguments. This will make your uh, answer more persuasive. Now, can the um, <coughs> international managerial economics have a relation with the import and export activity?
That's your faith. That's your fuel. That's your company. Face uh, the uh, issues of scare we trust. Now, what types of renewable energy are you working with? Wind, wind energy, okay? Solar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, any scary shots? Abandoned. Uh, the company is running smoothly. Mm -hmm. 
uh, what is what, what kind of techno technologies can um, be applied for a tourist company like so your we, company? Um, so we work with online travel licensees like um, uh, Airbnb. Uh, yes. So so is the, is the ways to the technologies to communicate with your customers, your partners? Yes. And uh, we also have to have a uh, website to manage tours and services with the tour guides yes. and other So companies. so uh, in uh, in a in summary, so you can connect the many tourist various economics with first with finance. finance okay, with marketing. finance with marketing. And human, okay. And human resources. Yes, HR. And uh, operation. Yes, and operations. And strategy. Yes, strategy. I, I think strategy is very important. It's a kind of, uh, um, I think it's umbrellas for many other uh, operations, activities. Okay, so you see that for your companies, you, uh, you raise the question about the managerial economics and then you relate it to many different. Um, activities in the companies in different functions of the cards of the company and you will see that all the functions if you want to uh, you want to make it uh, work well you have to understand how to use your limited resources you see, it's simple like a, I think it's a football team you see each member have uh, each ability and you have to organize them uh, a range of them in the right activity and in that way your companies can get the highest achievement okay that's these are some relationship of managerial economics with our fields first about marketing because you will deal with the, the demand <laughs> The, the price elasticity, yeah. Next, uh, you will learn about price elasticity. It's quite interesting, a piece of knowledge with you. And the finance, you have to decide how many capital you have in your budget. And you see that for a firm, they have to face uh, some difficulties in dealing with finance. Finance is very important because you see if the um, it's there may be a contradiction or the firm's owner if they want to uh, maximize their profit they have to save their cost and one of the costs is the the cost for salary or cash or wages okay the, the money pays in for the the employee, but when the employee gets lower earning incomes, they will have less motivation to work for the firm. So the two, they have the firms and employees. The they are trying to uh, to push or to to push the activities of the business. But they have, to some extent, the contradicts goals. If the firm gets more, the employee gets less. So the only way is to broaden their budget. The firm, firm. maybe you are you are already or will become the leaders of a firm. You must recognize this. Uh, I think maybe uh, this difficulty. And the best way is to push, get, you know, create the motivations for your employee, and then try to make greater piece of the profit, and then the two participants can get a higher in total, and both are satisfied. So it's referred to finance and capital budgeting or. Uh, break even analysis and optimistic cost. Have you ever heard? Have you ever heard about the optimistic cost? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes uh, how, how do you understand about it? How do you understand about the optimistic um, cost? Uh, from my understanding, uh, I think 
opportunity cost refers to um, if you run a product, you have to fight, you have to sacrifice. Yes, yeah, sacrifice. The yes. So the key word here is the you have to sacrifice something, and something as the uh, the second best choice to to do your to produce the product or to do an activity. So opportunity cost is one of the key words that I uh, I I need you to remember. After the completion of this course, the uh, opportunity course, and value added, what you get more from a stage of production or as an activity. And management assignments like repressions or analysis and forecasting. And also strategy. Strategy, as I, uh, uh, we discussed about the case of travel agency or the case of uh, renewables, the company producing renewable energy. So strategy depends on the type of competition. For each market, we will have different strategy to, um, to, to become the winner in the market. And structure conducts performance analysis it's after realizing this type of competition, you will uh, make analysis on the structure of uh, products and then decide the performance of the company or managerial accounting. Okay, two of you in this class work with accounting and will uh, refer to the relevant course or break even analysis or the opportunity cost, but in the aspect of uh, um, recognition and then can com uh, calculate or estimate all these costs in terms of money or uh, transfer is from uh, from other type to value uh, to to the in the uh, to the forms of value. That's the relation. And from that, from the relations of managerial economics with other fields, uh, these are some questions that managers must answer. First, what are the economic conditions in uh, their particular market? This will create the, the working environment the operating environment. So what type of market, market conditions? Can you list, can you list some, some aspect of uh, market conditions? Now, for example, for the renewable energy or renewable industry, what can be listed as the market conditions? Uh, yes, the purchasing, purchasing policy of the government. So it's about the policy or regulation. Mm -hmm. And also, for the case of the government, in this case of renewable energy, it refers to both the policy and the buyer or the demand. Okay. What can be other things? So, if you t think about the, uh, the conditions of the working environment, you can to approach in a logical way from the macro to micro, from external to internal. So for external, there will be macro and micro. Macro is something that the, the firms only accept 
and cannot have any effect to change the macro environment, like a uh, policy, like uh, culture, okay, and it's for some fields, like your fields, maybe the climate, okay, yeah, something that you can't question, you always uh, be impacted by the, the environment. And for industry, for, for the micro environment, uh, external, yeah? it's still external, but for micro environment, it's uh, something that has impact on your firm. And if your, your, your firms have, um, I think, maybe have a, enough power, you can have uh, um, some effect to make a change back to the, the um, micro uh, environment. So the micro environments will refer to the roles of, of maybe suppliers, okay? Maybe the customers, maybe your partners, okay? So it will be uh, and competitors. And then it really refers to economic conditions, can be macro or micro, and something internal. Uh, this only, this only example. So market structure, it means how many competitors, what type of com competition, okay? And the, the uh, characteristic of supply and demand, who will the demand um, have um, so high levels of demand or low level, and uh, they want the price taker. The producer will be the price taker or price maker. Okay, for I think it's for the electricity, the fields of electricity, the consumers are price price maker, price taker, and the firms, the industry can be the firm, maybe the price maker. But, uh, but that's always uh, the way we see the whole industry. But for any enterprise that newly come to the industry, they will be the price taker. Okay? Because you join the market and the price already set and you don't have chance to make a change to the price so in that case, you will, you will place, place the roles of the price taker instead of the price maker. But for the whole EVM, they may be the price maker because they, to some extent, can be the monopoly. Not the monopoly in producing electricity, but the monopoly in distributing electricity. Okay, so EVM can be the price maker. I still say to some extent because it's also they are we are um, maybe it depends on the government's policy not freely okay so technology technology is uh, something refers to the internal source of the economy so in this in summary when we refer to economic conditions you refer to the environment of the firm, of the enterprises. And if you have to list what will be, uh, what belongs to the, the um, environment, you can classify from the macro to micro, from external to internal, to list, it, to, to have the way to list all the factors belonging to economic conditions. And then, so you see that first they have to conserve seed of the environment. So any enterprise, when they enter a market, they have to carry out a survey on their customer to make sure that the customer, the, the market, the work in the, the environment of the will support their business in the future. If they don't, there's uh, not um, a big enough uh, volumes of 
markets for them, they won't think about changing to another market. The second question is, uh, this uh, government's, uh, government's regulation for international dimension of future conditions and macroeconomic uh, factors, etc. refers to economic conditions. And then, soon on, our firm be in this business. So it's more about the internal ability. After analyzing the opportunity and the the threats and opportunity, have you heard about the SWOT matrix? Yes, SWOT matrix. Matrix. So we have opportunity, we have a threat, and we have a strong strength and we have a weakness. <coughs> so, first, about the economic conditions, we mainly refer to opportunity and the, the, um, uh, the threat the, to know about the external environment. But then, you decide, your firm decides to go into the market or not. You will have to focus on what has the question. Should our firm be in this business? If so, at what price and at what and uh, at what output level? That relates to the firm's decision on the on the output and on the price. So you see that any firm. Yes, I remind once again. Any firm use our input to transform it and then they get the output. The outputs will be at what level and at what price. And if we make the connections with previous question about the, uh, the economic condition, you will see that what will be the acceptable price of the customers and then the firm have to decide what price will the firms will sell their products. And the next. How, how the firms can maintain the competitive advantage over other firms? And to answer this how question, this will decide their strategy, maintain competitive advantage. Competitive advantage is also another piece of knowledge I want you to, to remember. Uh, it's a hard way to get absolute advantage. Absolute, it means that you better than other in every aspect. Very difficult. It's still because limited structures. You cannot be um, higher levels of education, higher higher levels as or stronger than them, and you have clever than them, and you have even beautiful or handsome than others. Not absolute. It's difficult. But we always can find our advantage, competitive advantage, and to find the need to, you know, to, to position ourselves. So, maintain the competitive advantage. This may be the strategy of course leader. Do you have a heard about course leading strategy? Course, course leading means do you try to produce products cheapest, cheapest product or at the lowest price and then you can pursue, you can pursue the, the competitions of price, the price competition as you can just pick other competitors from the markets by lowering the price. So cost leading, but you see that to pursue pursue the strategies of cost leading, 
it requires the firm have to a uh, high potential of finance. And they have to um, have a, I, I think, a durable ability in the market. So what happens for the small with limited sources, enterprises? And for Vietnam, you see more than 90% of enterprise are small and medium side enterprises. So what can be the suggest strategy for them if they can't pursue the strategies the cost leading, the second choice, the second best choice, products differentiation. And um, uh, Dr. Um, Michael Walter, yes, Michael Walter, one of the greatest uh, might of uh, uh, modern uh, economics. When he came to Vietnam, uh, I think it's about more than 10 years ago, he said that the foreign enterprises uh, in Vietnam do not try to dominate others by using price strategy, but try to differentiate your products or find, or find some, some, some specific market and only focus on that market. So he, in his book, he uh, introduced three main uh, strategies. One is cost leading. The, the second, the first is cost leading. The second is uh, differentiation. And the third is focus, focus me. You, you only emphasize on one small group of customer. And then you may use differentiations, you may use cost leading, but focus on only small group. And that's the two, the, the later two, as suggested by Michael Porter for enterprise in Vietnam. That's why, you see, that's a, we all always um, encourage um, the enterprise to focus on more on more, um, their human resources. Because from that, you can create something different and to get the competitive market, a competitive advantage in the market. For a software engineering, yes, you may see that's quite clear, quite obvious. So focus your knowledge, focus your uh, for viewering um, uh, your the uh, talents, employee, and then you can create specific uh, product, and then you can have competitive advantage in the market. So that's it. right. Another uh, competitive strategy or market niche is the kind of focus. Define something uh, small. It's, uh, it's quite small. You can uh, flexible going the the, the the market, and you have a stable uh, position in that niche. And outsourcing alliance, alliance or mergers or international perspective. Yes, um, I, I still share with you one of the reasons I like international trade because. This will give me a better mind of international, of improve my international perspective. But you see that now, you don't need to go abroad to have an international perspective. With the development of information technology, and we see that many boundaries among the countries have a um, outdated or have removed, and still have to face with the face the international competition, even in your country. So it's the difference between enterprise strategies now and about ten or twenty years ago. Twenty years ago, you you may argue that. You can choose to uh, assist to international competition by going out. But for 
But now, even you don't want to face the international competition, you have to face internal in your country, internal competitor, internal partner will go to your come to your market and face and compete with you. So that's the that's the the, um, the case of the firm have to increase their internal ability, not to satisfy the domestic environment requirement, but meet the requirements globally. Uh, do you get this point? For many years ago, a firm may, may have a view that, yes, I'm small. I don't need really have to go out to compete with international business. But now, even you don't want to, you don't choose to compete with international business, they already come into your market and compete with you. That's why you have to increase your internal capability to satisfy with those both domestic and international requirement. That's the, the question three. And the question four, what are the risks involved? They have to assess and evaluate the, all the opportunities and also the risk. And sometimes they have to uh, think about the risk before the opportunity. So one of the risks is the maybe for energy fuel, maybe the risk of policy. What if you invest a, a plant, but you don't have a chance to connect with EVM? And you see, many enterprises now have faced with this risk. They already invest in uh, renewable energy, but they have uh, difficulties in uh, selling their outputs to EVM. So that's the risk. So that's the shift in demand or supply condition. And that's the techno technological changes that you can't catch up with the start of the, the um, state of the art techno technology or cutting edge technologies. And now everything is uh, digital. In, we live in digital life. And the enterprise that not uh, meet the requirements of e commerce, they have to withdraw from the market. You may see a lot of uh, shops, uh, closed shops, they have to close down <laughs> because every customer, many customers, most of customers turn to buying online. Even yourself. Now, rarely you come to a uh, shop and change uh, or try to close and make decisions and you online trying, yes, imagine it in, in, in your mind and then making decision and the product will shift to your house. It's very save your time and save a lot of effort of trying. Or the effect of competitions and interest rate or inflation rate. A foreign import and export company the change in um, interest rate or exchange rate may be another risk. So we have an exchange rate, especially for international trade. Uh, for uh, uh, you, <laughs> yes, for international rates, uh, international risk, uh, companies, yes, as you know, you learned and you remember. So. They have a phase, Eastern great. Do you know any? No, no. At the first phase of our policy, mm. the government had the opportunity to have the US dollar. Yes, in the US dollar. But in the next phase, they will have the US dollar. So, first, the, the, so the constraints, please, between your company and the, and the government. 
in units of US dollar.
uh, the changes, the, the take a in the future. But the Eastern rest already fixed at the beginnings of the contracts, at the times of the beginning. And so of course you have to face pay fees for that and you have to consider the, co the cost and benefits of each of the alternative <coughs> actions before making choose of a forward contract or another. And for the company, for your companies about renewable energy or traveling country, as traveling company, you already know about the situation that happened. So you have a, you have already prepared for that. And then even with the change, as I think that a uh, leverage model, leverage uh, levels of fluctuation is still in your plan. So it so will still help your company keep their goals of profit and revenue. That's some risk. The chance that actual future outcomes will differ from those expected. Okay, I think so. you can take a break before I come to the next part. If some of you look tired. <laughs> I can see your tiredness.